Hey Flock, welcome to the Epic Hobbies Paint by Numbers. This is part one of the Howling Griffins Primaris Marine series. So I've already painted one Marine in the Howling Griffins color scheme, which is a quartered color scheme. That's why I really want to focus on this, because it's a different scheme than you're used to seeing from like solid blue ultramarines, solid green salamanders, and so on. The quartered scheme takes a little bit more effort to plan out and really pull off well, but it's so rewarding when it works out. So I'm going to work through this over a series of videos. This first video is going to be getting the quartered base coat down. And so for that, I'm going to be using just two colors, Citadel Mephiston Red and Citadel Averland Sunset. Now, it's much easier to get coverage over the Averland Sunset with the red than vice versa. So I'm going to start by doing the yellow quarters first. One thing that makes the Howling Griffins color scheme especially challenging is that they split right in the middle of the belt. So as you paint along the belt on the back, it's a little bit hard to see because of the backpack, but it literally, you know, half the bottom half of the belt is red until about the midpoint here. Whereas a lot of quartered color schemes either treat the belt as part of the torso or as part of the legs. And so, you know, this red would go all the way up to the middle of the belt and then split above it. In this case, we split right in the center of it. So it just means a little bit more precision and a little bit more work. Now, what I like to do is start with the yellow and not worry too much about the precision here. So if I get the yellow into the areas that should be red, sort of so be it. You know, it's not really a showstopper for me at this point. So I'm just going to start by laying the yellow in. Now, I've primed this model first with black primer. I specifically used Badger Steinel Res through my airbrush, and then I gave it a quick light coating of Vallejo white surface primer. And mostly I do that so that it shows up nice on camera because just plain black primer does not appear very well on the camera. Whereas it's really easy to see all the detail when it's been primed with both black and white or black and gray. You know, especially because I focus the white from above and so it just kind of grabs a lot of the edge detail and makes it a lot easier to see what I'm painting. But in this case, it's also quite helpful because if I had started from a purely black prime job, it would be a lot more work to get this yellow base coat down. I'd probably be looking at three or four coats to get really good coverage. Instead, I'll probably be doing two. I'll be doing one and then kind of just coming in and doing some touch-ups. You can see I'm being pretty liberal with the paint. You know, I, I definitely break someone's too thin coats rule here. But I should also mention, because my Citadel paints have transferred to dropper bottles, they are a little bit thinner because I add some thinning agent when I do that at the time. Specifically, I use a little bit of Liquitex Flow Aid and a little bit of water. So you can see there's a couple spots where the coverage isn't perfect, and that's okay. We're going to come in and get a second coat in a moment. And I'm sort of trying to honor where the quarters end, but I'm just not being super precise about it, because I'll just paint the red over any kind of bleed areas. You can see, you know, you can kind of see some of the darker areas underneath here. I'm going to let that coat dry first fully before I go ahead and try to get more color down. Now we're going to do the opposite quarter, so that's the torso, you know, opposite that leg. And again, just having it here. And I will worry about having the helmet separately because it's kind of facing a different direction than the torso is. You know, it's got a more extreme angle to it. So we're just going to kind of treat the torso separately for now. The one thing we need to be a little concerned with, though, is that the belt is attached to the legs, and so even though you know it's color matching the torso, it does come to this same halfway point. So I just want to bring that across and come in here. And like I said, I'm just doing the top half of the belt because it does split lengthwise along the whole belt. Because the Howling Griffins are jerks when it comes to their paint job. But that's part of what makes it so striking and so unique. And again, just kind of slapping the paint in here. You will see that even though I slather quite a bit of paint on, I use the brush to pull it away. I don't just let it pool up in any spot. You know, I 
I place it down and then I pull it around to make sure that it's not just you know a blob in any one location. And now I want to get here. This is the really, really fun part, kind of getting under the helmet with it. Which means you know I'm going to get part of the helmet wrong. But we haven't painted it yet, so that's okay. Kind of just doing inside the, uh, you know, the neck crest. I'm not sure what we actually want to call that detail. And now we'll just kind of work into this arm. Now the shoulder pad's gonna have silver trim, so I don't need to worry about doing, you know, the trim, like even this surface right here. So I'll come in with silver, you know, probably a rune fang steel or rune fang over lead belcher or something to that effect. That'll come in later. For now, let's just get a nice quick yellow base coat onto the arm, especially the forearm here. Now the accordion joints, you know, the areas that inside the elbow and the wrist and so on are also going to be a metallic steel. But with this hasty base coat, I'm okay if I get a little bit of yellow and red on them. I'm not concerned with, you know, protecting those areas. My goal at this point is the base coat step is just speed. Speed and then a little bit of precision when I start working with the red, but I'm clearly not being too precise with the yellow. So you can see, you know, there's definitely some spots where, you know, the black primer is kind of showing through, and we're just going to let those sit for a minute and dry, and then we'll revisit them after. Now, the helmet, I'm going to be a little bit more careful. It's especially one of those areas where if there's a little bit of paint buildup, it's going to be more noticeable. So I'm trying to be just a little more careful here. But I do want to make sure I come even a little bit past the halfway mark on the crest so that the red... I don't want to leave a little bit of a, like a white gap in between the red and the white. That would just be even worse. All right, so there's our first coat of yellow. I'm going to leave this alone for a moment, just let that set up. I'm going to do the backpack. Now the backpack needs to match the torso. So it's going to be white on the side currently on the left. Or now the right, because I spun it around. So I'm not too concerned, again, if I make some mistakes with the yellow, because it's the red that's really going to sort of carry the shape of the quartering. I'm letting the yellow just bleed across a little bit across that middle line. You can see my brush is having a hard day with this. It's starting to you know, splay a little bit. Some of the bristles are a little bit bent because this is pretty violent painting. You know, I'm really just kind of pushing the color in everywhere. And I'm not too concerned with being nice to my brush at the moment. I'll give it a good dath later and tell it it's fine. So there's some areas I know I'm not going to be painting with this color. Um, this sort of ball area here and inside this. So I'm not too worried if I don't get yellow there. Alright, so let's go back to the Space Marine and just do any quick little touch-ups that are necessary areas where I know I can see the black primers showing through. And definitely this sort of little plate on his hip, I can see some. Now, if there's a tiny bit showing after this, that's okay. Because we are going to be doing, you know, some series of highlights after this. And there'll be the opportunity to just bring in a little bit more yellow at that time, if it's necessary. And now 
I just want to be a little bit careful. I don't want to mess up the helmet too much. And this area sort of in here isn't really too important if a little bit of black's showing through because it's going to be completely covered by the backpack anyway. All right, so there's our yellow. That's half our base coat, but it's the least precise half of the base coat for the armor. So I'm going to start with red, but I'm also going to start with it on the backpack. Now this is Citadel Mephiston red. And again, mine is just a little bit pre-thin, so you'll see it behaves maybe a little bit more liquidy than you expect or that you're used to. So what I want to do here, basically anything to the, sort of the right of this halfway point, you know, I can paint fairly sloppily. It's really just when I start to get to the middle here that I need to start being precise. So what I'm gonna do here is kind of slowly work. I want to make sure I have a good brush stroke. So I'm gonna work kind of towards the middle and then just make sure I'm pulling straight. And you see I'm kind of pulling out a little bit of an angle, so I'm just kind of calibrating my brush stroke as I go. You know, it's, the bristles were sort of flowing a little bit to the right as I pulled, so I sort of started pivoting the brush or the model or a little bit of both to make sure I really get just a nice straight line stroke up the middle. Now you can bring in, you know, if you do make a mistake doing this, if you go a little bit to, you know, a little bit over into the yellow area, that's okay. You know, Averland Sunset has pretty decent coverage. You know, it will cover the red. And it's not going to be problematic. It's not going to be, you know, six or seven coats or anything. It will cover it in one or two coats. It's just... Whenever possible, it's best avoided. It's easier to not have to fix that mistake. So now again with the backpack here, so there's five of these little vents across here. So this middle vent here basically defines where the backpack splits. And so we want to start kind of coming from this bolt here up to just the right side of that little vent. And we can kind of just fill in everything to the right of it. And then we come around the backpack, there's this little tiny flange. And it's pretty easy to see where dead center that is. Maybe not now that part of it's yellow, but it was obvious at one time. And it looks like I may actually need to paint a little bit more yellow. Just clean this up a bit. So you can see it is, you know, painting the red takes just a little bit more effort than painting the yellow, so you can make sure that the, you know, the division lines are pretty straight. That's not too bad. You can see we do sort of waver a little bit in the middle here. I'm going to just correct that quickly. And we'll also be bringing in some washes later on, some Agrax Earthshade, um, some Reichland Flesh Shade for the red side, and Cassandora Yellow for the yellow side. And so if there's a couple little mistakes here and there, they'll probably kind of get washed away. But you can definitely see that one where, you know, this middle line kind of just veers a little bit to the right. So I've just washed my brush off, and now I'm just going to very carefully kind of just try and bring that line back to center. And it looks like I may have gone too far in the opposite direction. And that's okay. That's going to happen a little bit. You do a little bit of this back and forth correction. You can do as much or as little as you want. I mean, that may have been perfectly okay with you the way it was before. And that's okay, too. All right, so with the backpack done, I'm just going to basically do the exact same thing on the Marine. But, of course, it's quartered instead of halved. So what I'm going to do is start by defining the edge of the red area. So I'm just going to start with the, uh, the cod piece here, crotch armor, whatever you want to call it. Bring that up to the middle of the belt. I forgot to paint part of the belt in yellow, so we'll correct that shortly. 
the red basically comes to the center of that dot and comes across. And now the whole leg over here, this can all be red, so it's kind of a nice sloppy job at that point. some on the surrounding details. You see this brush is really starting to split, so for this finer detail I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. I've used that brush for a lot of sort of violent base coating and it's starting to become evident that the case. There's the quarter I forgot to do in yellow. And so now at the chest, we alternate which side we're quartering, obviously. Just a little bit. There we go. Kind of tightening that line up. Like I say, so one of the sort of challenges is that the top half of the belt is supposed to remain red. Even though the belt's basically attached to the legs instead of the torso, it's painted as though it's part of the torso. Now thankfully you almost never see the whole belt, there's always kind of some stuff overlapping it. So if it's a little bit off, no one's really going to be able to tell. vigorous with the color at that point. Kind of up under the arm. No danger of me hitting some yellow there. And actually once I get to the arm, I can switch back to a bigger brush. So let's kind of keep bringing the red in towards the yellow, work on that area where the two colors meet. I can sort of really easily determine where the halfway point is because of the presence of this skull and this little dip in the middle of the neck crest. You know, very clearly those denote the center of that detail. And here, this will be behind the backpack, so if it's a little bit off, it's okay. No one's gonna see it. But I mean, if you want to make sure it's absolutely correct for your own sensibilities, that's okay too. I'm going to say here, you can only really see about half the belt, so it's okay if you just kind of lay the color in and don't worry about the fact that the bottom half is supposed to be yellow, because there's pouches overlapping that and you can't see them. So again, we want to kind of treat the helmet separately because you know, he's looking a different direction than the torso leans. So now we're going to do the helmet. Now there's these two little dots in the back of the helmet. You do a really good job of noting where the middle is. So you just come up between those two dots and bring it up and over the middle of the crest. You want to keep that as straight as you can but except the fact that you'll probably have to make some small corrections. And the face actually has a nice little angled kind of bridge to the nose, so you can pretty easily just hit half there. And there's a the little skull in the middle of this guy's forehead, which also does a really good job of keying the middle for us. So I want to check now is just that when I look at it, you know, it runs kind of from the nose through this little skull and is pretty much a straight line up onto the crest. And we're really close there. It kind of wavers a little bit right here, and we're good. Now you can see some areas kind of back under the neck that don't have paint. Washes will probably take care of that for us, but if you were extra picky, you could just use a longer bristle brush and kind of get in there. You know, I can't quite reach with this one, but I can get a lot of it. 
So now the arm can just be you know, sloppily painted as kind of shoulder pad at this point, the hand, etc. Because nothing's really getting in the way now over here. We don't have to worry about hitting any yellow. Unless we're just insanely sloppy, I guess. You can see with this smaller brush now, I'm also going back for color more and more often. You know, for the big brush, I could probably do this whole arm with just one brush load. But that's not really the case with a small brush like this. And really, I shouldn't be doing this much base coating with a small brush. It is not the right brush for the job, but it's the brush in my hand. Right, so now let's return to the legs. So we haven't done the back here yet. Now, thankfully, these pouches really hide a lot of the work for us. So we just kind of need to come straight down. Now, that's not perfect. I kind of blobbed it a little bit. see a little bit on this side here and now here's one of the places you can actually see the whole belt and at that point we can just kind of start laying the color in pretty vigorously on the leg same as the arm I'm going to switch to a bigger brush here in just a moment once I get the sort of inside of the groin here done where the two colors sort of meet. They don't actually meet, but they come very close to each other. So I just want to make sure I'm using a little bit of precision. There we go. So now I'm going to just clean that brush very quickly, get a little bit of yellow on it. That's the Averlin Sunset. And just fix this part of the belt that I just completely missed earlier. Trying to come directly to the middle of that circle. And now the bottom here, I'm just going to try and fix the quartering. I find this little bit in the middle of the belt probably takes the most adjustment to get right. You're going to kind of back and forth on it just a few times, getting everything really dialed in. touch with the red. Just to clean a few lines up a little bit. And you can see I actually didn't get the top of the belt here. So let's just kind of come in across the top of that. Just to the halfway point. Like so. Feels a little bit off here. There we are. Alright, so now we just gotta finish this leg up. I'm gonna switch back to the sloppier brush for that. And you see with the red, we don't have to really ever get that second coat in like we did with the yellow. It covers much more substantially in one coat, even being thinned. And that's really why I started with the yellow, because I didn't want to have to do two or three coats of yellow over red when one coat of red over yellow solves the same problem. Knowing how your colors interact with each other can save you a lot of time when you're painting. I don't mean like color theory, how they interact, but literally, you know, which paints work better for which scenarios. Sorry, I just realized I forgot to paint his shoulder pad.
All right, so that's the Howling Griffin's quartered base coat. In the next video, I'm gonna base coat all the other details. So the sword, the bolter, all the little finicky details on the armor and so on. And then we'll get into detailing both the red and the yellow halves. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. There's plenty more here on YouTube. You can also join me twice a week at twitch.tv slash epicduckstudios on Thursday and Sunday evenings at 8 p.m. Eastern, where I do stream my painting live. If you want to support the show, you can do that at patreon.com slash epicduck. Even giving as little as a dollar a month helps keep the lights on and the paint flowing. You can also help by hitting subscribe here on YouTube or sharing this video with some friends. Thanks a lot.